This is the Pulse of the Plankton for the week of April 5th, 2021. Fresh from the edge of San Francisco Bay via light microscope, a snapshot of local marine plankton. Like and subscribe for more plankton-related content. Marine plankton are living ocean drifters. Last week in the zooplankton, well, zooplankton are the animal-like plankton that eat other organisms, we saw barnacle larvae called nauplius. They were present and common in the plankton. There were so many and they've eaten so well that the golden green color you see is food filling their stomachs. Copepods, both adult and young nauplius, were common and active in the sample. Last week, I saw many epicaridean parasites attached to the copepods. This week, I didn't see any attached parasites, though I did spot one that may have detached from its copepod host. This copepod seems to be colonized by stocked ciliates. Ciliates are single-celled organisms with cilia, hair-like structures that they can wiggle and move. Perhaps the ciliates are paratrix. A polychaete worm larva from the spionid family is living in the plankton where it'll feed and grow until it's large enough to settle down. Another Magellanid polychaete this week, larger than many of the other plankton and clearly visible without the microscope at two to three millimeters long. There are so many kinds of polychaetes. This one is a small scale worm. You can see here how it looks different in dark field compared to in bright field. This week's plankton highlight is the larva of a Nemertian worm. Nemertians are marine ribbon worms and this one is probably in the genus Carinoma. If you look carefully, you can see one small dark speck on the worm. That's its eye and it only has one. This particular worm is interesting because it may be Carinoma hamanako, a type of Nemertian native to Japan. Without DNA analysis, there's no way to know for certain. Add in the link below in the description if you want to read more about these interesting organisms. Last week in the phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are plant-like plankton that make their food from sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. We saw Noctiluca, a dinoflagellate, and it's consistently in my samples, and this last week is no exception. During its life cycle, Noctiluca can divide and make two new Noctiluca, or they can reproduce using isogametes. Here, you can see the isogametes, each with their own little flagella on the surface of the parent Noctiluca. These isogametes get released into the water to create a new generation of Noctiluca. Diatoms are single-celled algae with cell walls of glass. They're a major component of phytoplankton. Of the rich and varied phytoplankton this week, Catoceros is a large genus of diatoms. Here, Catoceros socialis forms these loose balls of chained diatoms, cloned cells wrapping around in a gently linked matrix. There can be more than a hundred diatoms in a single ball. There were many other chain forming diatoms in the sample, including Asterionellopsis, Thalassiosyra, Skeletonema, Pseudonychia, and Odontella. This very long diatom is Thalassiothrix longissima, the longest diatom I've ever seen. Some pen-shaped diatoms don't form chains at all, but instead they may settle and glide along the surfaces, like these. Ocean weather. How about a brief game of Coastal Northern California Weather Word Association? Summer, fog. Autumn, sun. Winter, rain if we're lucky. And spring, wind. Particularly blasting constant wind from the north northwest. To our phytoplankton, these springtime northerly winds mean upwelling the process through which nutrients are introduced from deep under the ocean into the sunlit surface waters. 
Over the past several weeks, diatoms have been growing, multiplying, and enjoying this large-scale nutrient injection, dominating net toe samples collected from northern to southern California. But the extremes of the past few weeks, strong dramatic equinox tides, near constant upwelling winds, large-scale swaths of high chlorophyll red and satellite imagery have backed off. Dinoflagellates seem to have had a bit of a chance to catch up, becoming more common in the net toes of Northern and Central California, and even flipping to majority status in Southern California. And maybe the zooplankton has as well. All the copepods are clearly enjoying themselves. Sea gooseberries, like the four I fished out of my plankton sample, have an important predatory role during the springtime phytoplankton blooms, showing up with an appetite that keeps the copepod party in check. This satellite chlorophyll image mirrors the increased variability we've seen in our weather. Look at that rainbow mosaic of chlorophyll concentrations. And all the gray? That's where the fog has masked the ocean. Wait, fog? Fog is summer. Mm. The weather is scrambling, as is the ocean. Phytoplankton assemblages are shuffling and evening up, shifting. Zooplankton are grazing and being grazed, and we're staying tuned. That was the Pulse of the Plankton for the week of April 5th, 2021. A snapshot of marine plankton from the edge of San Francisco Bay. Like and subscribe for more plankton-related content, and remember to support your local National Marine Sanctuary.